Are you tired of playing with the same units over and over again? In this video, we will discuss all the units that were deleted from the game due to various reasons. Most of them were really cool, but overpowered. Make sure to watch till the last one to see the most ridiculous unit ever. For this video, we will start with the Terran race, and we'll only discuss those units that actually made it to the multiplayer game, not just the concept arts or redesign of the old units. How do you want your Zerg? Original or extra crispy? First one is somebody you should know. That's Firebat from the Wings of Liberty campaign, as well as from Brood War. This unit was meant to deal with light enemies such as Zealots or Zerlings. And even though it seemed like a nice addition, it didn't really fit well in the Terran army. Both Marines and Marauders are too fast when they use steam and Firebat also caused gas, which made it harder to build at the beginning of the game. So the developers decided to put Firebat in a factory, but there was already another, more efficient fire spitting unit, that's Hellion. And since Hellion is very fast and requires only minerals to be built, it made sense why Firebat was just removed from the game. He totally lost the competition and there was very little incentive to build it. Revenge is a dish best served cold to someone who's already dead. Because you killed them. Out of revenge. On the move. Diamondback was also a part of the Wings of Liberty campaign, but unlike many units from single player, it was planned to be included for multiplayer. It was a versatile, well-rounded unit that could be used both against ground and air units. The cost was actually quite high, both 150 minerals and gas, but Diamondback could also attack on the move which made it really special. However, Blizzard always tried to make each unit unique so that it fits a certain role in the matchup. For Diamondback, it was really hard for two reasons. First, at that time it seemed like a really OP unit. It required very little micro to kite and was probably too efficient for its cost. And on the other hand, nerfing was hard, since even a small change could make the unit obsolete. Besides, the only real usage could be found in TVP, while in other matchups Diamondback looked like a weird addition. This is what a Widow Mine could look like. Thankfully, it was changed. This unit created a ground field that would slow down and kill all the units that would try to attack or run past it. Shredder was designed as a good map control unit for the new Heart of the Swarm expansion. But the problem was, players didn't want to use it as intended by Blizzard. Instead, Terrans would just drop it into Zerg economy and it was very hard to get that thing out of your mineral line. And the whole unit design was just strange, because his magnetic field is easily observed and Zerg and Protoss would just avoid stepping in. So it was just a confusing unit and thus was removed from the game. Why don't you take that chain of command and go hang yourself with it? Warhound was introduced as something that would be able to deal with Protoss players if you want to play mech. It's just a very solid, well-rounded unit that did more damage to mechanized units and also had some cool rockets as a supplementary damage. What happened next, this unit pretty much replaced any other unit Terran race had. Due to his 7 range and a relatively high speed, it was a perfect kiting unit, and it also had a decent amount of damage and good HP value. It was just too good in every aspect, so no wonder it was considered OP and people complain about that. The best illustration, Warhound would even destroy Immortals, and to be honest, pretty much any unit fails in comparison with it. After some attempts to nerf it, Blizzard chose to remove it from the game entirely because they couldn't find a way to fit it. There was just no proper role for this unit. But he made a guest appearance on the 1st April 2013 as a replacement for workers, this was just a very nice small easter egg. This was the most hilarious unit that has ever been introduced to StarCraft 2. It was like a clockwork from Dota 2. Herc would pull himself up to the enemy unit and shoot him at a very close distance, making him basically a melee unit. It had 125 HP and also 1 armor, so it was a really scary unit in the early game. Apparently Herc was used best against Zerg players, and to make it even stronger, Herc didn't get any damage from Banelings, making it a very good bulletproof vest for the Terran army. While the concept was really great on paper, 
In practice, it was a total disaster. Now, there is an upgrade going down at that tech lab that is the uh, attack shield splash damage yes. Nero unit. That's right. Whoa. So this has an upgrade where it can uh, start to do splash damage. There it grabs <laughs> and one shots that uh, Zergling. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And the cooldown on that uh -oh. grapple is. You are gonna. No, no, says Stardust, saying no twice. And uh, with the splash damage coming in, and another one of these joining over, we're going to start to see a bit of damage being dealt here. And already this uh, Herc. <laughs> I've got to call this guy Hercules, because this is doing uh, quite a bit of damage here, Day 9. And the Roach one's been added on because they're having to deal with these guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. If this game is decided in the first few seconds by a pair of the brand new units, then that will be exactly like my experience. And uh, he's chasing this uh, queen down, and he does... Uh, oh, down she goes. Kill it. But these guys grabbing away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, MC Hyun having the fun. We're starting to see roaches in production. And uh, one hit away, that guy. And what? with the splash damage about to uh, complete here as well, he's going to be killing these guys in <gasps> five minutes. And there the roaches are out. Finally, we're getting the chance to see the game go on to the next stages. Oh my god, that move was so hype. The micro in this game. As you just saw, Herc was basically too good in the early game, and it was really hard for Zerg players to counter that. You had to go roaches and it was a really big investment in the early game. But apart from that one interaction in the beginning, there was just no place for this unit at any other stage of the match, so his removal was justified. So what's your favorite one from that compilation? I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to check out the two worst balance matters that ever happened to StarCraft 2. Have a nice day and see you next time.